Hello, I'm Dr. Sam Hancock of the Emerald Planet and Emerald Planet TV. We come to you on a week-to-week -week basis from Washington, D.C. in the United States as we look around the globe in 144 different nations looking for those thousand best practices, the technology, services, and products that are making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And as we have a planet of 9 billion people by 2038 and possibly 12 to 13 billion by the end of this century, how are we going to be able to take care of all these people on planet Earth? And that's what Emerald Planet's all about. We come to you looking at the solutions, the best practices from around the globe as we create the Emerald Planet. Hello, welcome to the Emerald Planet. We're making a difference as we move through the 21st century. And see the long-term impacts of climate change. But we're glad to have you. Thank you for being with us. Looking at the country of the Gambia, which is West Africa, on the continent of Africa, 54 nations. Uh, the Gambia is the smallest of those, but yet has a huge importance as far as agriculture is concerned, uh, women's empowerment, women's entrepreneurship, and women and young girls' education. And so this is Alba Mary Khan. She's the founder plus CEO of the Women Boss. And we're looking at these different case studies. This is case study number three about food security and population growth. And I'm with Mary, uh, looking at the, the woman boss, how did you decide that you wanted to, one, to be involved with agriculture, but also you're doing so many other services just as helping them uh, create these logos, uh, these this very nice branding for these women that are going into agriculture? Sure. Um, thank you so much for having me. So I can um, speak about, for example, the logo that you're looking at with Alan Tentu. So she is the one who, um, her name is um, Isatu, so she came into a cohort, a second cohort. So within our accelerator program, we actually focus on uh, entrepreneurial skills as a whole. So we talk about, um, you know, branding, marketing, all the way through, you know, saving, budgeting, financial savings, et cetera, because without it, you really cannot know um, whether you're successful or not. And so we wanted to um, help all sorts of women entrepreneurs. As long as you're a woman, we, we know we're there to help you. But we wanted to create specifically certain programs for women in agriculture, um, because not only you know can it help you know feed the country, but also you're touching rural parts of the Gambia because majority of the women there, that's their only source of income. Um, no, so no. that was mm -hmm. the main point. Now, looking at the uh, the Gambia, uh, we've talked about, you know, it's the smallest country, small population, yet very important, uh, rich as far as the soils and the fisheries and the natural resources. But it actually, it follows almost the entire country follows, you know, the Gambia River. Why is that so critical as far as agriculture and the future for women in the Gambia to be able to develop their own business? Sure. So if you look at the map of the Gambia, obviously the river Gambia runs right through in the middle of it. So what we encourage women is try to utilize the river as a source of water, um, you know, to be able to use that um, for your farms. Um, that's one thing. Another one that's trying to help them, you know, fundraise for boreholes that they need um, to be able to have water supply, because that's one thing. Water supply is just... Um, I don't know why we have water problems, but um, with the amount of rain that we have, but we have water problems in the Gambia. And so uh, it's just really, really important to push that agriculture, which in turn educates people on how to actually maintain good source of water. I think it's fantastic. But uh, I, I really like this uh, this photograph, uh, but you know, not only just the, the woman entrepreneur in this, but looking at the housing, looking at the land, this looks like a very uh, nice place to, to live, but also yeah. a wonderful place to expand and, and uh, build on agriculture. Absolutely. Uh, Gambia, it's um, a really um, rich in natural resources, but a beautiful country because it's in the coast of Africa, you know, surrounded by the ocean and the river. And then, of, of course, with Isitu, um, she owns her own farm. Uh, she calls it her garden because she doesn't feel like it's that big. It's 18 by 50. 
um, where she grows her own fruits, vegetables, um, you know, grows her own nuts, etc. But not uh, furthermore, now she collaborates with other women that also own their own farms to supplement the amount that she wants to, you know, produce so she can sell it. Um, but with her, what I really like is she, I, I challenged her to say, you have all these great ideas and you're an educated farmer. So she actually has a college degree. And so I said, why not even go further and try to do like, um, you know, a fresh box idea, kind of like when I lived in the United States, when they delivered my fresh box and whatever sure. comes in, you know, would come that. So I challenged her to get a new logo. I challenged her to get, you know, that concept. And so that's what she was working on right now. Yeah, this is absolutely incredible. Uh, looking at this land, it looks uh, very rich. Uh, yes. Yet a lot of this really is hand labor. Yeah. So uh, how do you attract women into this saying, OK, uh, you have a college degree you're high school educated, uh, but we're going to take you back to the farm and then you have to start doing manual labor again. How do you how do you bridge that gap of a society, you know, the old British colonial system where yeah. you had to have a degree, you had to pass the national exams in order to be able to do absolutely anything within right. the society. Uh, but you're going beyond that with the women boss, correct? Correct. So what we push for, and you know, when I talk about making agriculture uh, sexy again, is we push for not only can you you know, uh, create generational wealth because this could be farms that could be in your family for a very long time, mm -hmm. but also, you know, you uh, creating jobs, um, you know, you feeding and helping um, alleviate hunger. Um, you talking about poverty, this could actually help so many women um, in this case to create employment for them. So we talk about more of the pros than the cons. And then to say, what not a better thing than to grow uh, your own food? Where now a lot of people are actually even, you know, that have retired from, you know, working in various NGOs, large NGOs, or even governments that are going into agriculture now. So we make it very lucrative for them. Yeah. And now looking at this, I mean, again, this is very attractive land. It's it's quite flat, so it's it really is easy to get around and to right. farm. Uh, these berms that they are planting into. Again, is this to conserve water? And how are you using best practices both for the land and water so that the agricultural production is constantly increasing and not a general decline as you're seeing around the globe when you're sure. using harsh chemicals and, and sterilizing the soil? Sure. So like, you know, with her especially, she doesn't use any fertilizer. She does, I mean, not fertilizer, um, any chemicals to grow um her um organic fruits and vegetables that's one thing she wants to uh, stay true to herself that's why she chose to have a smaller scale that she can manage and maintain and so with her you know making sure that she maintains a good well to have you know make sure that the water is the water supply it's healthy enough it's clean enough for the fruits and vegetables that she grows and then making sure also furthermore to, to employ you know women entrepreneurs that actually help her um, to maintain the soil and the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful plants, beautiful plants. Tell us about how it's so important really to be going organic, uh, not only for use by Gambians themselves, but now more and more, if you're going to export, particularly into the European Union, it better yeah. be or certified organic. Right. Um, so for us, um, that's one thing that, you know, they're not um, still exposed to the uh, um, the terminology of organic and non-GMO, you mm -hmm. know, coming from the U.S., knowing that this is what I expect out of my fruits and vegetables. This is how they've been growing it for years. Mm -hmm. And so now it's that, you know, how do I keep the fruits and vegetables fresh and uh, making sure that, you know, when there are certain insects that are around, how do I maintain that? What can I use that are safe enough um, that will still maintain that organic quality um, for mm -hmm. her fruits and vegetables? In this case, we do eat in the gamut. We eat a lot of leaves, and these are some of the leaves that are, um, I don't, they're similar to spinach, but, you know, made into different stews that she also grows fresh. Um, catering for some of the women um, in the Gambia as well to make it easy, processes, washes and packages it all uh, and delivered. And so I think it's just, you know, mainly looking at overall what is healthy and making sure that what we put in our stomachs are important. Yeah. And looking at this, these are very vibrant uh, plants. 
And yeah. so uh, doing that, how much time does she really have to spend, you know, in her, her farm, but in her garden, as she calls it, uh, in order to have plants that look like this and then to have a sustainable income? So for, for right now, I know that what she's um, doing right now is just making sure at least on a daily basis, she's at the farm, uh, making sure that, you know, if her staff is there to maintain that, you know, uh, insects and, you know, well, the water level and the soil level, everything looks good. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously whatever harvesting, harvesting time so she can map out when to collect her revenue and, and, and the sales, et cetera, depending on certain orders that she'll has to fill as well. But I know from her is that it's late, very, very labor intensive. And then you also have to make sure that you're making enough money to pay, you know, the farmers that are um, also helping, helping you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at uh, the plants, and we're going to leave this here for just a minute, uh, sure. but how is it, uh, how do they balance uh, the environment, economy, and also the, the food that they're actually providing to their family? And how does a woman boss help them to look at this balance that it's about the environment, it's about the economy, but also how you take care of your own family and those within your own community? Correct. So for women farmers, like in the Gambia, especially for rural women farmers, um, they put their, their, most of them are head of households at home. Um, you know, their husbands, whether they choose to work or not, but sometimes, you know, they're doing other jobs that uh, don't share very well um, in the, you know, in the household or majority of uh, single women um, that have to put their children to school, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so with you looking at the economy as a whole, where we're we creating, um, a source of jobs uh, for women entrepreneurs where you have these farms, we can help boost them with seeds, um, diversification of seeds, but mm -hmm. where there are different types of seeds that we can give them. So not every woman is producing onions, for example. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, so much waste at the end, um, but looking at different ways for them to harvest and be able to earn um, their own income. So we teach them from entrepreneurship one-on-one all the way to you know, how to actually save for the future. Mm -hmm. We were talking earlier about this concept of the, the solar dryers. How do you think this would help uh, to process these foods, be able to harvest in the high seasons when you have the greatest amount of crops, store it and then be able to sell it in the marketplace, be able to use it with your family uh, so that you're evening out the uh, income flows and uh and but using everything that you're producing sure i mean i think it will be amazing it's amazing idea it will be fantastic for them because you know in the gambia one thing i must give them credit to they're used to eating everything so fresh you cut it today you eat it today mm -hmm. um but there are some instances for example okra it's one thing that we eat a lot in the gambia and so there's it's seasonal so when the season goes out we feel like people don't get to eat it but it's so nutritious. And I think that's a great concept that, okay, if we, if we dry it well and, you know, they can put it in their freezers, then they can use for later consumption. And that's the concept that it's need to be taught in the, in the industry for sure. And we'll talk more, uh, we'll talk more about that. But I tell you, this is really just beautiful fruits and, and vegetables uh, that you have. Uh, going out on this, what do you see for other women coming into agriculture? We got about 20 seconds. Uh, yeah. in the future as the new green economy for the Gambia, but also the entire African continent. I mean, I push for women. I said, don't be afraid. Come in, you know, everything that you have and push it in. Agriculture can do so much for you financially, create generational wealth. It can feed the economy. It can create jobs. Mm -hmm. So we really want to push them and know that this is, this is a, a profession that should be um, admired just like as a doctor is. Fantastic. Awa Mary Khan, founder plus CEO of The Woman Boss, as we create the Emerald Planet.